I think a group or an individual that sees itself systemically um, recognizes the need for friends in all sorts of places. I think the way we've traditionally structured K-12 education, at least in this country, um, has been pretty hierarchical and there have generally been um, a single or maybe two sources of where most of what I need comes from. Um, if, if I'm in a school district, my money is coming mostly from the local district and from the state. Uh, all the supplies I need are coming from the clearinghouse that the district operates. My community relations all happens through that district office. And so schools, um, under a hierarchical system, have really no incentive to think systemically, or, or at least there's challenges to thinking systemically in the day to day because uh, there's only one or two pipelines where resources come in and out of the school. Um, in the environment in which we've worked, which is a massively decentralized school system, all schools are forced to think about the multiple ways where their resources come from, where help is, where friends are, what's the task that's going to get done from having to find a new building f for recruiting new students and teachers to um, ensuring that school improvement is happening because there isn't a district person coming in to watch my school and so this is a unique organizational context where I think schools in New Orleans at least uh, have been forced to think systemically because they're, they're um, not separate, separated from the system by any sort of structures anymore. Um, an interesting thought experiment might be how do we replicate that sort of um, innovativeness or viewing a school as a little bit more of a free agent in its community than we, we typically think, I think. And I think we have a lot to learn from the private school community about that because private schools uh, have tended to do a better job locating resources in uh, diverse pockets, leveraging the relationships they have with the families they serve and the community that they're in uh, because their resources come directly locally from that community much more than a, than a you know, strict pipeline coming out of the state. Um, and so if K-12 schools can organize themselves as living, breathing entities that represent everything, challenges and successes of a community, then a problem in the school is a problem in the community and the community is ready to help solve. If, if a school views itself as serving one small isolated function uh, for a community and just uh, operating in its turtle shell, well then the help is not going to be there and the support and the ideas for change are not going to be there. And so I think um, it's very important to find a way for schools to uh, take ownership for their success. And I think bureaucratic structures historically have made that really hard. Um, now I don't want to have a hurricane knock a school system under the ground in every city in the country, so how can we accomplish that um, through less turbulent means perhaps? And, and I think um, when schools have autonomy on curriculum and autonomy on staffing and schools are forced to form relationships with the families that they served and, and the community resources that exist uh, by ha not having stuff spoon fed to them. Um, so perhaps uh, you know, some of our schools need to be nudged out of the nest a little bit and may, perhaps then they can learn to fly. Uh, but without schools taking serious independent ownership for how they exist in the world, um, and that really fosters the systemic view and, and how we do that within the schools we have without disrupting and these are our children in these schools so we don't want to kick them out of the nest uh, you know, too hard. Uh, so how do we do that in a way that reaps the benefits of sort of autonomous actors uh, without making the whole thing come crashing to the ground.